Welcome, welcome, people. My name is Clint, Clint Beastwood. If you're new to me, Clint, if you're old to me from the Dread Dash podcast, uh, due to the coronavirus, everything like that, me and Malcolm are not together. We aren't separated. Don't get scared. Calm down. Everything like that. The Dread Dash podcast is still a thing. We're still official and we're still on. Um, it's just a lot of lockdown stuff going on right now, so it's hard for us to record. Um, this is the only one and only time I'm really going to say something about that. But, uh, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. So, a lot of pause and a lot of halting. Uh, me and Malcolm are still probably live streaming the Division 2 um, and probably whatever other games that we got in our, you know, in the tuck. So, that's probably what we're doing right now. Just a lot of live streaming on YouTube and everything like that. Malcolm's on Twitch. Make sure to go follow him. X, is it Xnight98? Xnight89. <clears throat> Um, make sure to go follow him on Twitch and everything like that. But yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Just because this coronavirus has got us separated, so it's kind of hard to record. Uh, a lot of lockdowns, a lot of restrictions, and everything like that. I know everybody is telling us to either use Zoom or like other programs like that, but it's kind of hard because Malcolm is um he doesn't really have an official official computer like that or official official laptop like that. And plus, it's hard for him probably to get like a space where he can like get like the best type of silence <laughs> seeing that we have kids and stuff like that so it's kind of hard for uh, for that to go on i know a lot of people have been su- suggesting that but it's just something hard to do like when you got kids like i'm all, i know you'll probably think because we got this nice big green screen in the back and everything like that like we in the studio or something like that nah we in the basement <laughs> so so it's kind of hard just to like get a little piece of silence or what the case is uh for him to record and everything like that and plus he doesn't have like an official official laptop he's building his own computer his own master computer right now to take over the world right now so it's just what it is what it is so you just get me for right now um this may last a month this may last a little less than a month we don't know yet um when everything gets a little more clearer on our restrictions and stuff like that in the city or whatever the case is, uh, that's when we'll start moving around and everything like that, just to let everybody know. But, uh, yeah, this is just that one intro video on why you just see me and not Malcolm because we pretty much do everything out of my crib or whatever the case is. So that's just what it is right now. Uh, so, yeah, don't get worried. Dread Dance Podcast still live. We're still here. We're not breaking up. The, the the boys are still back in town and everything like that. Like, we're not breaking up or anything like that. So, um, but, yeah. Just wanted to give you guys that little heads up, notice everything like that. So, uh, I don't know if I did the intro or not, but enjoy this video, whatever this may be. And we back! Welcome. My name is Clint. Um, today I'm going to be giving you guys a review for Bongo Stray Dogs. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, so yeah, man, this is one of those mystery crime mafioso type anime, but also has this side thing, which is mostly all the characters have some special abilities. Um, so yeah, um, it starts off with a kid named Atsushi. I think I'm saying that right. Atsushi, right? right? Yeah, I'm saying that right. Um, he's an orphan. He's been kicked out of his orphanage. Um, they're pretty much tired of feeding him, tired of taking care of him. They're, they're pretty much telling him, um, he's not going to be anything like that. Um, the thing about this anime, it's not one of those type of animes that I kind of dive in, like, most frequently. I think the last crime mystery animated I probably watched was probably Death Note maybe um but this time around um I really like this anime because it makes you it it, it kind of forces you to watch the anime only because um all the either detectives or all the enemies or bad guys in case if they all have special abilities that's this is why they can bump heads so easily and the anime is like really, really good. Um, it makes you watch because the thing with their abilities, they're not like straightforward on what the abilities do. Like, uh, just for a reference, My Hero Academia tells you such and such. Uh, Quark does this, blase, blase, everything like that. But with Bongo Stray Dogs, actually, 
um, the head, uh, the lead character name, Atsushi. Um, his uh, ability, I think, name is Beast Under the Moon or something like that. Now, of course, that's probably the most obvious one. Like, maybe he turns into something like that. But it's not, it doesn't tell you that he turns into a were-tiger. Like, at the end of the day, he, turn, he's a, he, turns, he can turn himself into a tiger. Either half-man, half-tiger. Uh, he could take on the abilities and speed and, like, healing of, like, a tiger. Like, stuff like that. It doesn't tell you stuff like that. But also, we have this guy named um, Dazai. Asuma Danzai. That, um... At finds or Atsushi finds Dazai, unfortunately, and he's freaking floating up the river because this guy is obsessed with suicide. In cases, so let me see if I can find his special ability. Um, his special ability is called Oh, his ability no longer human. That's the name of his uh, ability. Now, off rip, you probably have probably zero clue of what the hell that even could possibly mean like does he turn himself because since Asushi turns himself into a, a tiger does that mean that Dazai could turn himself to a zombie no it, it's it's nothing like that um actually no longer human ability actually cancels out every anybody else's ability that's his ability but you wouldn't you wouldn't know that just based off the name um also there there are other characters like um I'm pretty sure I'm a I'm a Butcher these names, but let's say uh, Dapo. Dapo um, and Dazai, they're kind of tight with KCS. They actually find Asushi together with KCS. And his ability is um, the name of his ability is Lone Poet. Um, now, off that, you probably think, of course, it's something probably writing, but you don't know the exact ability. So, his ability is actually he, had, he carries around a notebook. And in the notebook, he can write down whatever he wants to come out of the notebook. As long as it's the size, I think it's the size and the width, or probably the weight also of the notebook. I'm not really sure, but I'm, I'm, I know for a fact it's the size of the notebook. And whatever he writes down, he can make that um, into an actual thing that he can actually use. Kind of like old girl from uh, My Hero Academia, if you all know who I'm talking about. I don't know what her exact name or case is, but that's his ability. And also, um, there's just, there's just other abilities and everything like that. Um so Dazai and Dopo, they kind of recruit uh, Asushi to be part of the Armed Detective Agency. Um, in this agency, there are there are, there are a few members. Whatever the case is, he he even does his like uh, I guess a test trial to see if he's a good person type thing. Whatever the case is, kind of like a lot of animes do. Whatever the case is, but um, during this, we get to see the other like characters or the other members of the Armed Detective Agency, which. Uh, I'm not going to go through all their names because I'm, I might murder or butcher them. But um, there's a kid named Kenji. He's a country He's a country boy. But the thing with his ability, he's like superhuman strong, like two times or 20 times strong, is whatever the case is. But he can only do it when he's hungry, <laughs> which is which is kind of crazy. They also have a nurse, of course. And they actually got, they got a kid that can, um, I guess, uh, do projection type things like that. But they call it like a matrix like that so it's just it's just things like that like that um like it's a lot of animes or a lot of things that's mixed together that aren't usually mixed together that's kind of what makes this uh, a great a great anime i think in my head because you don't really get a lot of crime thriller uh comedy in magic type animes um or at least not done correctly um so yeah Asushi is this rare, 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 rare tiger um, that a group called the Port Mafia is actually looking for. So now the thing with uh, the Port Mafia, uh, one of the members of the Armed Detective Agency, which is Dazai, Dazai um, he was um, an ex-member of this Port Mafia. So the whole first season is actually his apprentice from the Port Mafia, which name is um uh, I'm gonna probably murder murder his first name, but it's Octagawa. Um, he's the apprentice of Dazai from the Port Mafia, but now his apprentice from the Armed Detective Agency is actually Atsushi. So 
Um, and also, at sushi, he has a price on his head for like seven billion dollars because he's a, a rare, rare tiger, and people want to buy him, control him, tame him, do whatever. Um, so yeah, these two pretty much bump heads in season one. Pretty much the that's pretty much the whole premise of season one because um it's just Asushi coming into his light his um abilities and everything like that um there is a dope ass fight scene between um Asushi and Akutagawa on a fucking um on a freight on a freight boat that's like either I think it's either blowing up or it's like splitting halfway in half it's like it's either either or um it's a dope fight scene um. But also, like, bef- even before that, like, we get the usual anime-esque type stuff. Like, the kid down himself, his powers being shown and everything like that. Like, he doesn't even, like, in his whole first season, like, he doesn't even know the full extent of his own powers. Like, until, like, the final episodes, or whatever the case is. When he, um, he kind of gets control. I don't want to say that he has full-on control or knows exactly what he's doing. But, like, he has those, like, like clicks. Like, um... Uh, I don't want to say Naruto, but he he has those clicks where he can like control. He knows what he's doing. Like he know he can control his power. The case is, but he's not like fully under control. Like he does, he can't be the wear tiger whenever he wants to be. So like that's kind of um like where his power is standing. The case is, um. But the thing with this anime, it's just a lot of um. It's it's a it's a lot of different storylines only because you get to see the. You get to see the lore of, um, like, the Port Mafia. Because, like, they have their own crew of people with special abilities also. Like, there's a there's an old guy who's been around for, like, forever named uh, Ry- Ryuro? Ryuro? Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but it is what it is. And his ability is Falling Camellia. Now, you probably have no clue what the hell that means. I I probably have no clue what the hell that means until I actually watch him use his um ability, and he can literally tear somebody from limb to limb just by touching them. Like that's his ability. Like, and it's a lot of it's a lot of these guys that have abilities that um that are still even unknown in season one because um I think it's three seasons of Bongo Stray Dogs, so like. Um, the first season, it's literally just a lot of Dazai, a lot of Dazai, uh, a lot of Asushi, and a lot of uh, Atagawa. That's literally just the first season. Um, I've crept into the second season, and oh boy, it's a. Uh, I loved how they how they did that. Like it introduces you to, it catches you, because I think the first season is only twelve episodes. It's not it's not that long, um, but it catches you so like so smoothly like you have to figure out more to the fact like because i think the last either the last or the second last episode of season one dazai pretty much has a challenge to all his um members or or group or his group or the case is like what was his past job because nobody knows what his past job is nobody could guess what the case is and after like everything happens or whatever the case is Season two goes into because um Octagawa actually says it in season one. So if that's a spoiler, I'm sorry in case it is. But Octagawa says um Dazai used to work for the Port Mafia because he used to train him or the case is. Um and then in season two we actually get to see like the past of Dazai and like where the name actually uh Bongo or Bungao uh, and Stray Dogs actually come from. Like, you get to see all that in season two, but I'll get to that later. I haven't even finished it yet. I got, like, three more episodes. But season one, it's fire. It's it's a fire-ass anime for, for an anime that's not that well-known for some reason. Um, The only reason I even found this anime, I probably found it off a list or something like that, I think, like I said earlier. But um, just... For it to be an anime that's not widely known or like not widely popular, the case is, and to be out from, I think, 2016, um, and a lot of people don't know about it, the case is, uh, it's kind of a shame, but it's also like, 
it's understandable also because it's probably not one of those animes that a lot of people aren't into. But once you like fall into the lore of the the armed detective agency and like and you find it to fall into the lore of like all the abilities and um and like the action sequences and everything like that because nothing is it's no choppy um fight sequences or anything like that it's all it's all great animation um the story is actually really really good like like a few animes after some time like after a few episodes i get bored with and i get i get to, to that part like like I've seen this before. Like that's why I had to stop watching Black Clover because it was kind of just another shonen. Like I've seen all this stuff before, but this one, like I said before, it kind of forces you to watch it because you really want to see what these people' abilities are because they they might even not even tell you when they introduce the people and say, yeah, this is their ability, but we ain't telling you what the hell it is. So we ain't gonna tell you what it do. Like you gotta wait. You gotta wait till like two, three episodes down the line to see this person actually get pissed off, or actually this person has to use this, uh, use this ability in a situation. And that's the dope part about this anime because it it will it will really make you have to watch this anime. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is a very very dope anime, man. Um, I hope a lot of people, I hope this review or this little summary of the case is has have people go check it out. Every case is because. For it not to be well known and to be out in 2016, it's really dope, man, and it's unfortunate. Um, I will say the intro was kind of fire. I'm not gonna give it like a one grade, a two thumbs up, way way up, like Hades and shit, uh, type fire. But it's, it's decent. Um, and also, oh yeah, uh, the end credits. The end credits will kind of mess with your head because, um. I want to say it's kind of like an artistic style choice because, of course, like all anime, it gives you a preview and even credits or it gives you credits, then the preview for the next episode. But the thing with Bongo Stray Dogs, it gives you the it gives you the, the credits of like the main cast, I guess, or like the main production company or the case is. But then it goes into the preview for the next episode. But then it's a whole nother like two or three minutes of even more credits. So it's kind of like, kind of like setting you up because it goes into complete silence. Like, um, it has the, the outro, it has the outro, the credits, the preview for the next, uh, episode of KCS and then straight silence with credits. So it kind of, I think, I think that's like, uh, some type of art, artistic style choice for KCS because of course they could have the, could have the, um, music or something playing in the background you can't even um like i watch it through the funimation app so like when you usually watch something through the funimation app it usually says like this episode is next or the case is no with bongo Stray dogs it would literally make you watch the entire um second half of the credits or anything like that so i think that's like the just a artistic style choice the case is because it's literally complete silence and just credits going down the screen but um far as this anime bro i think i think this i think this anime is like really cool this is i'm Damn near done on season two. I didn't, and the thing with season two, I crept into season two because I didn't even know I was watching season two. Like after um, Atsushi and Akagawa, they have their big fight on that ship, like I mentioned earlier. Like I think that's the last episode of season one, and then like season two happens, and the way that it just flows so much, I had to go back and check on my on my list and see like did I watch the entire season one and I did like so like the flow of it like you're you're literally just going to be watching like a great story just going just going great so um yeah Bungo Straight Dolls man I think I think it's a really dope dope anime man I think y'all should watch it um if you haven't if you have watched it uh go back and watch it and um yeah man I, uh, I think that's all I got so this has been my review of uh, season one. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely going to come back with season two when I'm done with that to tell you all about that. And also, I have some more anime or uh, movie reviews or something on the way also. So every day I'm going to be uploading something new for you guys, whether it's an anime, a movie, or whatever the case is. So just be ready for that. But uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, make sure you go check that out, man. Hello. Welcome to the page. If you liked this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. My name is Clint, aka Clint Beastwood from Dread Dash Podcast, but also just Clint. 
from the Clint Beastwood page. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And make sure you check the description. The Discord will be in there. And make sure to join the conversation. If you have any suggestions or anything like that, make sure to comment below. But yeah, my name is Clint, Dread Dance Podcast. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. Thank you.